Hello all, welcome to Ferdinand Tutorials. On today's episode, we're going to be learning a very interesting subject in the field of aquaculture. If you remember, we've been talking a lot about fishes, how to harvest fishes, how to feed them for optimum growth. We've just been discussing a lot about fishes and we've been getting a lot of feedbacks from those in this line about how the video has been helpful so we thought what more do these people need to know about fishes and aquaculture in general and today we're going to be teaching you what happens to fishes when their water is dirty well before i proceed guys if this is your first time on our channel please please and please hit the subscribe button we need your support and if you're an old subscriber if you've been here with us from the start we're really grateful we love you now let's continue now as we all know water is essential for the life of fish yes guys water is essential for the life of fish it is the medium that supplies all their needs including breathing fishes breathing water as we all know eating reproducing and growing all these things are done in the water that is why water is very very essential for fish growth now in this video you're going to be learning why your water becomes dirty what to do when fish water becomes dirty what will happen to the fish if the dirty water is not removed and of course tips to maintain a clean water in the pond let's kick off now water quality is the most important factor affecting fish health and performance in aquaculture production and systems believe me guys that is the truth now good water quality refers to what the fish wants and not what we think the fish wants this means that we must understand the water quality requirements of the fish on that culture very well now what i mean by the fish on that culture is the species of fish the type of fish that you are cultivating or growing you must understand their respective water quality and their requirements very very well now fish lives are totally dependent on the water they live in because this is where all their needs come from guys this cannot be overstressed all fish needs come from water breathing growing reproducing eating everything is done in water so if this is true which it is when their water is dead you can imagine the kind of harm it will cause to them now when the fish water is dirty it leads to underdevelopment of the fish species it leads to wastage of feed, it leads to stunted growth, and of course, death. It leads to waste of resources and all the rest. Just name it. Now, achieving and maintaining good quality of water through all stages of production plays a major role in overall fish health and performance. So now, tips to keep the pond water clean. Most farmers are aware of the importance that good water quality plays in a pond habitat most farmers are aware of how important it is for good water clean water to be provided for the fish now not knowing how to get or keep water quality can sometimes prove challenging not knowing when are, when that water is actually suffocating them not knowing when that water should be changed can actually prove very challenging for fish farmers your water may be clear, but your fish might be acting different, which can signify that something might be a little bit off in your pond's water. That's what I said earlier. We should not judge the fish water quality based on what we are seeing. The water may seem clear or your normal changing days is every four days. But all of a sudden, they're not acting well, they're not eating well. It may be that that water is actually due for a change now with a little education and experience which you're going to be getting here you become better equipped to solve whatever pond water issues you might have for starters follow our seven tips below to help keep your pond water clean number one maintain a healthy fish population as Elia said maintain a healthy fish population in every pond there is a current capacity try as much as possible to maintain that current capacity don't overstock the pond. Overstocking it leads to what excessive weight output. And that excessive weight output contaminates the pond water, which leads to what? To dirty pond water. So try as much as possible to prevent it. If you have larger number of fishes, try to separate them in different ponds. When your pond is not enough, try to get a tank and put those fishes. So that is it. Now the second tip is don't overfeed your fishes. 
When you feed fish more than they can eat, the uneaten food is left to decay in the pond. Now remember that I advise my farmers to always feed their fishes twice a day. Don't go lesser and don't go higher. When you go lesser, it leads to what? It leads to uh, undergrowth of the fish, which can lead to death of the fish. Or it can lead to your unhappiness because you're not seeing your income. But when you overfeed them, excessive waste are being produced. I said a lot of the uneaten food in the pond. Are you guessing it? Which contaminates the water, the pond water. So that is it. Now the third one, the third tip there is create a proper balance of plants. At season speak, you should have 40% to 60% of the surface area of your pond, either covered or shaded by plants. Remember that plants take in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. Why that oxygen is being taken in by what? The fishes. So you should proper balance, like make a proper balance between the plants and the number of fishes. So the fourth one, choose the right size pump for your pond. You should be circulating the entire pond's water volume a minimum of once every hour. Make sure your pump's flow isn't restricted by debris in the schema or biological filter and be careful not to pump water higher than it was intended every pond has its flow limitation the fifth tips number five is clean debris from the pond before it has a chance to decay your pond schema will remove most of the debris from the surface of your pond but that's not where it ends you can also use a pond net to skim leaves and small sticks before they have a chance to descend to the pond's bottom where they will decay. Decaying debris combined with fish waste and leftover fish food can cause ammonia levels to spike in pond. Have you heard of ammonia levels? Okay, let's talk about ammonia levels before I go to the six tips. Now, ammonia can be harmful to your fish and should be addressed right away. If you see your fish jumping out of the water, now when I mean jumping out of the water, I don't mean normal jumping like unnecessary jumping. Now remember that fish are excited and when they're excited, especially at night, they try to jump out of the pond. I have it in my farm, they do it most often. You understand, when the weather is cool, when the atmosphere is very, very nice, you see the fish jumping out of the pond water. I'm not talking about that kind of jumping out. I'm talking about abnormal jumping, like in the day when things are going on, you see a fish jumping out. You get, it's a lot of words, ammonia present. You understand? We say that it can happen after adding an agar treatment. You understand? These fish can start jumping out of water. You understand? Like when we have an ammonia spike, get, which can happen after adding on what? An agar treatment. So that is it. Now the sixth step, that's number six. Choose proper filtration for your pond. Just like your pond pump, your pond's filter should match the size of your water garden. Most pond filters are based on ideal circumstances. And if you exceed those, your filter becomes less effective. Always upsize your filter so that it can handle more than the capacity of your pond. And also, don't forget, remember to clean your filter according to the mod manufacturer's instructions. The seventh step is keep your pond cool during the dog days of summer slash increase in temperature. Now remember that there are some times when the temperature is very very high at some parts of the year. So when pond water exceeds 75 degrees Fahrenheit, that is 24 degrees Celsius approximately, it has a difficult time retaining acceptable levels of dissolved oxygen, which is critical for the health of your fish. That is why it is important to have the surface of your pond shaded by aquatic plants to help pond water cool. Now, if you look at my pond, I do use a, a banana a, to shield it or plantain covers to shield my pond. You understand it is necessary and it's also it is also necessary for you you should try doing it if you don't have one it is not that the banana it, it doesn't take much of your time from the dirty water you can use it to grow the banana and some other plants that are around one of my next video i'll be talking about uh, how to com uh, combine the fish and other plants you understand what where the water goes how do, does this waste water how is it used what, of what usefulness is it because i don't allow my own waste water from the fish pond to be wasted as it is called i use it for something useful you don't like to miss that video so wait for me in my next video so we said that fish needs oxygen to survive as we all know so if you see them at the pond surface gasping for air add an aerator to help them during times of extreme heat so that is all for this video that is all that we can give you about this wonderful video thank you all for coming here thank you for supporting us 
see you again in my next video please share to your friends share to them give them this video look at people that this video is more important to give it to them like subscribe tell them to subscribe to this channel and thank you all see you next thursday bye